Welcome to the video. In this video, we're taking a look at these things here. The new Quantum Goggle V2 Pros from Hobby King. And we're also, while we're doing this, we'll have a look at the new diversity receiver as well. But before we get into this, let's just remind ourselves what this is a pro version of. Now, this is my little black bag. This actually came from Super Target in the US. It's actually a, a lunch cooler, but it's perfect for carrying the goggles around in. Now, these are the goggles that we've had a look at quite a few times on the channel. And we also recently had a look at the V2 upgrades for these as well. So there's been lots of questions from subscribers about, well, hang on a minute, if I've got the original V2s and I've bought the upgrades, which are those lenses and some extra foam bits uh, and other bits and bobs as well, if I buy all those bits, then I've got the V2 Pro, haven't I? Well, I didn't know the answer, so now we've got them, we'll actually do a comparison. I tend to use these goggles with uh, this receiver these days. Uh, this is the Quantum Single um, 5.8 auto scan thing. We got these in the review video where we looked at the ground station and uh, we have loved them ever since. They work unbelievably well. The screen is beautiful and they give great reception. So what I'm looking to do here is to compare and contrast what this kit does for us, uh, which is great. It's very comfortable. It works beautifully. The only challenge here is a couple of things. One, it can be a little bit heavy at the front. Uh, this a new glove helps with that. Um, my adjustment here though for the lens has to be right up at the very back for it to fit. What we'll do is we'll have a look at the differences. So let's get this old one out the way or the non-pro version should we say. Uh, we'll come back to the diversity receiver once we've unpacked everything but let's look at what we get in the box. So the first thing you notice when you open it is there is a red and black version of that improved glove that we already have. Loads of strips of foam along with the instructions. Then we have the cradle for the lens and this is very similar to that cradle that we saw in that uh, pro upgrade kit. We also have the lenses, uh, very similar to what again we got in the kit, those very thick heavy acrylic lenses. We get a bag of cables. Now we are going to spend a little bit of time looking at these just because I've had a couple of subscribers get really confused how these are all worked um, and when I explained it uh, the, the subscriber was a lot happier. So we're actually going to spend a little bit of time in this review how these cables actually help you. And then we have the two halves of the clamshell along with the screen. Now the first thing you notice when you get hold of these halves, if you have one of the other versions, let's just move this out, that'll just be the screen at the back, is that this clamshell is actually quite a bit deeper than the original one. So let me just take my original Quantum V2 goggles apart. So there's the original Quantum V2s and hopefully you can see that these are quite a bit deeper. They're about an inch deeper. Now, I'm guessing that's because other people were having the same problem as me with the depth of field. So that means that absolutely these goggles are gonna perform slightly differently to the standard V2 Quantums, just because we have that extra distance between the lens and the bits at the front. So what I'm gonna do is very quickly build it, uh, exactly as we've done the other Quantum videos. So let me do that and we'll come back and we'll have a look at it all together and see what it's like when it's all made up. So these go together a little bit different from the other ones, but I've noticed a couple of other things when I'm starting to put them together. All you need to do is just glue in these two strips. I just used a little bead of hot glue and they're in great. Then the top pops on and it's very easy to try each of the lenses out. Now what I'm finding is, is with the very slightly deeper front, um, I'm actually getting a better view from the 1.5 lens and for me it's less of a strain to get the focus. Uh, I'm very slightly uh, long sighted so close up as I'm getting older is getting a little bit more complicated so actually have being able to have this still at the front unfortunately but it is much much clearer because of that extra inch at the back. The other thing I've spotted is that there's these kind of stepped pieces around the edges. So when the clamshell is together, that will help block some of the light leaks too. 
So the last thing I'll point out is as I've been test fitting these and putting these up to my eyes, I've tested out each of the lenses individually. I don't really want to double the lenses up. You can do if you really want to, to uh, increase the magnification even more. Uh, but, but as these acrylic lenses are quite heavy, I kind of want to keep it um, as light as I can. So I can get away with 1.5 at the front. I could probably get away with having this further back if I started doubling lenses up. So the last thing I'll point out then is on the original Quantum V2s at the front, we had these um, cheek pieces, camera's picking them up, there we go, uh, which were really uncomfortable on my face. Um, I never got around to covering them with foam, but they've got rid of them on these, which is fantastic. So we are going to use the foam strips on these um, around the front just to make them a little bit more comfortable. So let me finish making these up. Uh, it's not going to take that much longer because literally we're all we're going to do is pop the top of the clamshell on. I'm not going to use any glue. Then we're going to pop it in the glove and we'll come back and we'll have a look at all the cables you get. Give you an idea of the image because the screen looks like it's exactly the same one as in the previous version. Then you can see as usual with the Quantum V2s, it is a lovely big screen that's in there. And again, you've got that ability to kind of focus and move everything around. So let me finish making it up. We'll come back and then we'll start putting it together with a receiver and also talk about how we're going to do the battery and some of the cable routing too. So we have now put the goggles together. Uh, very straightforward stuff. The thing I have done is with my other set, I had to do the same thing. I had to cut a little bit more out of the nose out here and build up these cheek pads. You get a load of these kind of foam strips in with the uh, the kit and I've just put one at the top and also two at the bottom. Now I didn't do this with the old set because of those wacky cheek guard things, uh, but as they haven't had those, uh, these fit really, really nicely to my face. So um, I've also put it in the glove and I've rooted the single cable that comes out of the bottom of the screen and the two connectors that come attached to the screen, one for power and one for audio and uh, video connections. So let me just go through all these other cables that you get here because I know this has been really confusing for a couple of people and it took me a while to figure it out. So the easiest thing to do is to just talk about the fact that this kit is designed to support a couple of different battery types. You obviously have the little kind of um, three cell with a Dean's connector. I use these on uh, the Quantums a lot. So for those of you that have that, there is a cable here that can route around the side of the goggles, plug into the battery at the back, and then provide power for the receiver and also power for the goggles themselves. Now, the receiver itself can fit in this pouch here. And then underneath, it's just a case of installing a power connector for the 12 volts and the video lead, which should, because it's a three and a half inch jack, just be able to plug in like that. With a little bit of cable routing, that's a nice, clean, simple, easy way to do it. So that's what that longer cable is for. So what about the other cables in here as well? Well, a lot of these are kind of adapter cables. So the other kind of battery that you tend to use for goggles like this is this style here. This is a Fat Shark style with this kind of connector, not uh, an XT60, but something else. And these cables are for this style battery connector. So you have two lengths depending on where you want the battery to fit. If you want the battery all the way around the back, just like we did with the XT60, then you've got a much longer one. If you want the battery by the side or um, closer up on the actual goggles itself, then you have the shorter version as well. And that's what those two cables are for, to support that battery type. And then we have adapters for this connector here. Now this is the connector that goes from the screen that has the audio and video out. And if you remember, the original one actually came with a little adapter here. So that gives you your RCA connectors to plug into something that's RCA. However, if you're using a receiver that doesn't have those style connectors on it, then this is to allow you to change it. So if you have a different kind of RCA connector, then you can support both those, a male and female, and these simply plug into here. Or if you have a FPV receiver that has a really small little plug, 
then you also have the adapter for that as well. So hopefully that explains how all the cabling is done. So you just need to pick out of all those cables that you get, the one that you actually need for your setup. Now we've basically set it up now by plugging this in here, routing the cables around the back and popping our battery in the back here and powering it up. Then we've pretty much got everything set, ready to rock and roll. You see the screen's on and everything else as well. Now the challenge that we have, of course, is that we don't want to have a look at this one. This great receiver is one that we use a lot already, but there's a brand new version of this as well. So this is the single version, but now we have a diversity version. So let's have a quick look at that and then see how we need to pop that onto these toggles, because that will make this a pretty killer set. So the diversity receiver itself is a very similar unit to the single one, but just a little bit bigger. So you see here, same kind of idea, just a little bit chunkier. So same kind of inputs, same kind of AV outs. Uh, no RSSI on the bottom of this one, sadly, so it can't be used with things like the Quantum uh, Ground Station, but it will fit in this pouch on the side, and it, then it will allow us to mount something like a patch antenna at the front, or something that's slightly more directional if we're going down the field, and on the back one, we could stick a good old circular polarised antenna. And again, it's just a case of plugging in the AV out, plugging in a power cable. And these two power cables are actually slightly different. The centre pins are more widely spaced. That's interesting to note. So that should do it as well. We'll push it down very slightly. Not quite as nice a fit in the goggles. Could potentially go the other side, but that seems to be the best place. So I would say that's probably the best place for it. We're going to have to go up a little bit, and then you can actually see the screen and get to the bits and pieces as well. So let's very quickly pop some antennas on here. I'll fire up an FPV quad, and we'll have a look at what the signal looks like. So wired all up, it is quite a neat little installation. We have the cable coming out the front. You do have to undo these straps very slightly because this slightly deeper sock. Then we have the cable coming around. That cable then plugs into the AV out of the quantum receiver. I think I've got a diversity here. I've stuck a circular polarized on the back and um, something a little bit more directional on the front for the demo. And then we have the power connector coming from the back of the goggles into the adapter for the screen and also plugging into the back of the diversity receiver. And then at the back, we have all those going through and then connecting up to the battery. So let's plug it all in. I'll show you how it works. So the really nice thing here is the screen on this new diversity receiver is really cute. And as usual, there is the screen and you can see how gorgeous it is just like in the normal v2s but again with that extra depth it's slightly nicer so let's just see if we can um, get that image moving there we are you can see how nice it is okay so the way that this little guy works is pretty impressive. This little button on here is actually a joystick and a press button. So at the moment we've got it in diversity mode and uh, if I press enter I get the menu and it's got channel scan, diversity. Now what you can do here is if you go for channel scan it's actually looking by frequency to see which ones are being used. Uh, then we've got all the other bits. We've even got things like a spectrum analyzer, so you can see which of the channels have the spikes in, and you can pick the one that's working the best for you. And then in the goggles, you can see it all working. And here on the front, if we just go back, then 
you've got all the information here about how it's all working, what's going on, how the uh, individual um, strength of each of the signals is working. We'll do a separate video on this to go through how it's all set up. But I think these goggles with this receiver is pretty fantastic. I like the fact that they have extended the front of the uh, of the goggle so that you can actually get a much better uh, view of what's going on. I like the fact that they thought a little bit more about how some of the cabling works so that that's a bit neater and happy now about the battery at the back is good. So in summary this is a slightly different product from the V2 upgrade pieces that we've already had a look at because the main difference here you can get all these other pieces and we've looked at the upgrade kit but the difference here is that that deeper clamshell that they've got as part of the kit and personally I think that's a great improvement for those of you that weren't having a problem before that's great uh, for those of you that were like me that had to have everything right at the very back it might be the difference between it all working and uh, between you having a problem so I'll put links in the description for both these products at the bottom go and have a look and uh, hopefully now you can see how some of this stuff is going to go together and for those of you that get confused about how all these cables work it's a little bit more straightforward Thank you for taking the time to watch that video. There are lots of other videos on the channel and they're carefully ordered into playlists. So you may find that there are other videos on this same subject that you can go and watch. So I would recommend going into the playlist area of Painless360 YouTube channel and looking around and seeing what there is. You never know what you might find. Thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe and happy flying.